Hello my friends. If you don't know me, then nice to meet you. My name is Jenna. I recently moved to Japan from the UK and it was the scariest thing I've ever done. There's no doubt about that. Sometimes those scary decisions are the best ones. And that's what happened. I am living my best life now. And if I didn't give myself courage to move to Japan, then I wouldn't have known how good this would be. But there were moments before I moved that I struggled with imposter syndrome. I felt like, am I actually capable of successfully navigating such a big life thing? So I wanted to make a video about imposter syndrome because it's a very real thing and a lot of people don't even know about it. I mean, I didn't even know about it until my friend told me about it. And now I realize how common it is and I see it in other people and I just want to talk about it. <laughs> so I hope you don't mind that this is what this video is. Whilst I chat away about imposter syndrome, I hope that you will enjoy this little painting. It was inspired by Team Labs Tokyo, which I went to with my boyfriend Will, and we had a really nice time, and the whole experience was very deserving of being painted. If you ever get a chance to go, then please do. It was incredible. It's an immersive museum uh, with digital art and the pictures really don't do it justice but the pictures are still pretty incredible too so yeah. Um, anyway, before I go on a tangent, I'll get to the point. As I said, I struggled with imposter syndrome a little bit before I left the UK um, and I've struggled with imposter syndrome in many aspects of my life. One of the main ones being in my hobby of art. I absolutely love creating art and painting but I've often felt like a bit of an imposter about it because anytime someone has complimented my art I've somehow felt like, like I wasn't deserving of that compliment. It somehow felt like I didn't actually create that art so please don't compliment it because it's not me. I don't know, it's really hard to explain but if you get it then you get it. <laughs> but I've learnt that is imposter syndrome. Apparently 80% of adults experience imposter syndrome at some point in their adult life so you've probably dealt with it too. You just maybe haven't heard of it before. I wanted to just express my thoughts on the, the matter. I hope you don't mind. I just want to say too that if you have a hobby that you like doing but you're not a pro at it, that's okay. You should keep doing it. You don't have to be a pro at everything you do to enjoy it or to be proud of the, the work you create. Whether that's a creative hobby or not, if you enjoy it, then please do it. I've sometimes given up on my art because I felt like I wasn't a professional and therefore I shouldn't waste my time. But you don't even have to be good at something to do it. So even if you're not an artistic person, I really recommend painting because it just makes you happy. It gives you a creative outlet. It gives you something to focus on. And even if you don't think you're a creative human being, I think every person on the planet could benefit from expressing creativity. That's what I think. <laughs> I recently made a video about anxiety. I said that I struggled with mental health since my teenage years and I would go as far as to say that that has shaped my life into the person I am today, the life I have today, the people I know today. It shaped my life and it's led me to the hobbies that I enjoy the main one being art and painting and I think that if I wasn't such an anxious teenager then I wouldn't have spent so many hours painting and focusing on a piece of art. Sorry, my battery died. What was I talking about? Perfectionism. Perfectionism and imposter syndrome I think go really well. They're like two little devils that just really prevent creativity and I think being aware of that is the first step in overcoming it. I've always been a huge perfectionist and I think that's why I've been so obsessed with art because I can really focus on perfecting something. I found this quote uh, which I found was really interesting 
It says, people who encounter imposter syndrome are more likely to be perfectionists because you believe that the quality of the work you do is somehow tied to your inherent worth. I mean, it makes sense to me, doesn't make sense to you. Honestly, my true thoughts are that I think it's sad and unfortunate that we've developed as a human species to be constantly thinking about how we're not good enough or comparing ourselves to others or doubting our abilities in something. I'm sure there's probably a good evolutionary reason for it, like we needed to be the best at something to survive. Yeah, I think it's sad that if you you feel like you're not a professional at something, so you shouldn't take up that space. No one is a professional overnight. I think the first step in overcoming imposter syndrome is realising that these talented people aren't just born with this special, magical talent with skills that you will never be able to learn. The talented people that you see, whether it's art, music, non-creative subjects, maths, intelligence, Yes, people are born with incredible abilities, but they're nurtured. They work on those skills, they nurture them, they practice and practice until they become what you think as professional or you know talented or... People aren't just born professional. Talent comes from the hard work and the practice of the, the natural abilities that someone is born with. I hope that makes sense, that's what I think. If you're feeling like you're taking up space in a hobby, in an industry, in a career, then you are taking up space, but that's not a bad thing. Take up all the space that you need to, be unapologetically you. So I think if we can find a way of overcoming imposter syndrome, there's really no limit to what we can achieve as humans. I know I've been holding myself back on pursuing an art career because I'm just too scared of the failure. What if it doesn't work? What if I can't make it work and then I feel worse about myself because it failed? But I think that's exactly what the problem is in the first place. We're too scared of failing at something so we don't even start. It's really crazy how powerful our minds can be in shaping our lives. If your mind is telling you that you are good at something, you will continue to do it and practice it and get better at it. But if your mind tells you you're not good at something, you often give up. If we can create a positive mindset, then we stand a chance at overcoming imposter syndrome because we're telling our brain, actually, no, it doesn't matter that I'm not the best at something. I'm still going to do it. So I think I've come a long way in the last couple of years at dealing with imposter syndrome. I still feel like an imposter, especially in my art. And that's something I'm going to work to overcome. But I just thought it was an interesting thing to talk about. Um, so let me know what you guys think in the comments. Have you dealt with imposter syndrome before? If so, how did you overcome it? Or are you still trying to overcome it? And how did you do that? How are you working to stopping that feeling of being an imposter? <laughs> I feel like we can maybe help each other out in the comments and just create a positive space because feeling like an imposter, it doesn't feel nice. So let's help each other out. If you've got any advice, then leave it in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed this little sketchbook spread. I was very proud of it. And I think I'm going to turn them into bigger paintings and possibly sell them. If you like this video, then please give it a like. Consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. I'm posting quite a lot of different things about my life in Japan, about the art that I'm creating. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Be kind to people and keep a positive attitude. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.